Hey everyone, it's Connor here from Durham Hearing Specialists. I hope you're doing well and welcome back to a very interesting case. What we have in this patient's eardrum is a T-tube or tympanostomy tube and it's that sort of pale green cylindrical structure that's embedded into the eardrum and as you can see it's surrounded by a clump of very wet thick dead skin. Um, and that's causing a sense of, of fullness in the ear and hearing loss as well, so the patient's not very happy about this. And the procedure is going in and very, very carefully and delicately removing as much of that dead skin as we can. We can't get all of it, but we need to get rid of the majority of it to, to get rid of those symptoms. And as well, it's not particularly helpful for that wet, dead, soggy, dead skin to sit there um, because it's just a lovely breeding ground for bacteria might lead to an infection, who knows. But uh, what's a, what, what is a T-tube? Why is it there? Well, tympanostomy. So tympano implies a relationship with the eardrum or middle ear space. So the eardrum, the sort of medical scientific name for it is tympanic membrane. And the middle ear space, some people call it the tympanic cavity or tympanum, okay? So what this tube is doing, and it's a hollow structure, you know, in the shape of a capital T, Okay, what you're seeing is the kind of the bottom of the T that's sticking through the eardrum. And they're commonly made out of silicone or Teflon, something like that. And uh, what it's doing is it's creating an artificial sort of ventilation for the middle ear space. So it's creating that opening between the ear canal and the middle ear. Why has that been done? So an ENT surgeon has assessed the patient and for whatever reason, the patient's middle ear isn't being ventilated properly through its normal means via the eustachian tube, which connects the middle ear space in your skull to the back of the nasal cavity or nasopharynx, okay? So that tube is supposed to open and close every, you know, several times a day, whenever you swallow, whenever you yawn, whenever you move your jaw in certain positions, okay? So your middle ear space is constantly being ventilated throughout the day. And if that tube remains closed, clamped closed, for a period of time, and probably this will happen to everyone watching this video at some point, it's very, very common eustachian tube dysfunction. But you may get a feeling of fullness in the ear, like a bit like you're kind of like on a plane or you know, you feel like there's some fullness there or some hearing loss or you hear yourself in your ear and it just feels a bit funny. If that uh, continues on and the pressure doesn't equalize, then you can get a buildup of fluid behind the eardrum, we call that glue ear or middle ear effusion, or the eardrum can get sucked backwards, we call that retraction or it can get sucked backwards and stuck to the middle ear structures and middle ear bones. We call that atelectasis. And then that can lead to a number of complications like the bones can erode or you can get um, cholestiotoma, things like that. Um, so the surgeon has kind of gone in and basically artificially created some ventilation into the middle ear space and stopped those complications from happening. So it's a good thing. That T-tube was meant to be there and so that's where, anyway, tympano relationship with middle ear or eardrum, and then ostomy. I'm not entirely sure where that suffix comes from. I think it's derived from stoma, but it implies that you're creating kind of a semi-permanent opening to allow the drainage of waste material and so on and so forth. So very different from otomy. So otomy is just making a hole, okay? And that's derived from the Greek word tomi, um, and obviously different from ectomy, which is taking something out like tonsillectomy. And ectomy uh, derives from ectomia, I think, which is to cut out. And then plastia is for repair, obviously. So that's where all the suffixes come from. And uh, I'm just trying to very, very carefully get rid of this dead skin around the T-tube. The, the reason that I'm going quite slowly here, this is not, it's not necessarily a difficult job, but it's not easy either. What we have to remember here is, A, we're taking debris off the drum and the eardrum, what's not super fragile, is not extremely strong. You know, it's, it's, it's flexible, but it's liable to damage if you're heavy-handed. So we've, all we've got to do here is just, you know, hover over the surface of this dead skin and very gently strip it away. And then, of course, we have the T-tube here, which I'm not in any mood to disturb, to be quite honest. Now, you can probably shove up against it and nothing will happen, but what you don't want to do is kind of move it around or God forbid your hand slips and you push it in. ENT won't be very happy about that. But uh, 
the, 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 I suppose the cautionary thing with these cases is one, when you discover it and it's all clumped up with dead skin and it, the tea tube is buried in the skin, you don't really know if it's in there nicely. Now you can clearly see here that the, the tea tube is nicely lodged in the, in the eardrum, but they're only, I think they're only supposed to stay in the ear canal for about two to four years, something like that, maybe give or take a year on either side. So if you're catching it at the wrong time, maybe it's half out or maybe there's infection there or granulation, something like that. I mean, to be quite honest, you know, the tissues around the ear, eardrum and ear canal do look a little inflamed. So, and granulation tissue is extremely vascular tissue. So you don't really want to go suctioning around in there. Otherwise it'll bleed profusely. So, um, and that's why we have to be extra cautious when, when cleaning these cases. But um, so far so good. I mean, there's little raggedy bits of skin here and there. Um, but it's a, it's a fairly good outcome. Patients' symptoms are, are markedly better, and that's what's really important. You know, we certainly don't want soggy dead skin sitting down in there because what does soggy dead skin do? It's sometimes a precursor to infection because bacteria love to eat soggy dead skin. They like to live on soggy dead skin. So we don't want to give, you know, a bacterial colony a nice place to live and feed on particularly because there's an artificial opening into the middle ear space. And then of course, you know, we're setting ourselves up for, for otitis media, oto ear, itis inflammation and media middle. I hope you found that interesting. Uh, I've only shown a T-tube or a tympanostomy tube once before, but that was a grommet. It's like, and a grommet is like a cylindrical one. It's not T-shaped. Um, and it, it's like a white cylinder with a baffle at the end. So I'll link that down in the, in the description box below if you want to watch that. But I hope you found this interesting. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comment section below and I will try my very best to get back to you. And of course, I will see you guys on the next video.